So the question is, how does God speak? Interesting, isn't it, that uh, Jesus is referred to as the Word. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word took flesh and dwelt among us. How does God speak? Well, the most honest thing I can say to you is that uh, he speaks through Jesus. The Father speaks through Jesus. You remember one of the apostles saying to Jesus, Philip, I think it was, show us the Father. And Jesus said to him, Philip, how long do I have to be with you? Whoever sees me sees the Father. So uh, you want to know what God looks like? the eternal father, but he looks like a baby in a crib. He looks like a man suffocating to death on the cross. He looks like what appears to be a piece of bread in the hands of his priests. All of that is God speaking and us hearing God, the father. Now the most, um, give you some examples now would be would be good he speaks in dreams these days in which we live are the days that the prophet Joel talked about where I would pour out my spirit on all mankind your sons and daughters would prophesy your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions so um, God speaks in dreams you want an example I'm sure <clears throat> so the, the good books say, and the book don't lie, that the Lord God appeared to Solomon in a dream. And he said to Solomon, ask of me what you will and I'll give it to you. So he speaks in dreams. And Solomon began a little spiel to God. You know, he says, uh, I thank you, God, that you've made me king uh, in place of my, my father, David. <laughs> but I am just a young person. And this people you have given me are so great and so vast, who could possibly govern them? And then Solomon said to the Lord God of hosts, give me, give your servant an understanding heart. And all this is taking place in a dream. God is speaking in dreams to Solomon. Okay. Uh, later on, he speaks to somebody that you well know, Joseph, uh, the husband of Mary. It must have been an extraordinary love story, you know, just extraordinary. And the word comes to Joseph that uh, Mary is with child and that they have not yet come together. So too much, you know, too much, Mary pregnant with somebody else's child, not his. And the Lord God appears to Joseph in a dream, like he spoke to Solomon. And he said to poor, well, probably <laughs> Joseph was in a state of nightmares. Um, he says to him, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary, your, your beloved, as your wife. The child that she has conceived in her is the child of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, what an extraordinary thing here. Um, this little slip of a girl, maybe, maybe 14, maybe stretching it, 16, I don't know. But as you know, it was in the sixth month that the angel Gabriel was sent by God to this virgin named Mary of the house of David and the angel and she was awake so yeah he speaks as well when we're awake and um, he calls her full of grace uh, full of the trinity uh, full of God and little Mary is is more than disturbed about the greeting wondering what it meant and of course the angel and therefore God knows what she's thinking, you know, um, and says, don't be afraid, Mary. Um, don't be afraid. You know, um, you are to conceive and bear a son 
and great would be his dignity and he will rule over the house of David forever. So Mary was wide awake and this, this angel of God speaks to her. The Bible often uh, interchanges the word angel with the word God himself. Like one text will say the angel spoke to Moses from the burning bush. Another text will say God spoke. So uh, then Mary, as you know, asked the question, how is this possible? I'm a virgin. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Hence the holy offspring to be born will be called Son of God. Uh, God speaks through his priests, loud and clear. Like um, there's a piece of flat bread lying on an altar someplace in the world today and there's a goblet of wine. And then this, this priest who is only a man, a child of Adam, um, God speaks through him. Father, let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they will become for us the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God speaking. Or you see it all over the world every day. I imagine millions of times, um, men and women like myself, uh, I, I'm not a man and a woman, of course, but you know what I mean. Um, me and my mother, uh, they, they, uh, they go before the priests uh, day after day, like Jesus told the lepers, go show yourself to the priests. Uh, people come to the priests and they say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned, you know, and they confess their sins. And then God speaking through the priests says, may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and by his authority, I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, it, it, um, I suppose every human being in a sense on the face of the planet is God speaking, the person themselves. Because if you go back to the Genesis narrative, let us make man in our own image in the likeness uh, of ourselves, male and female, who he created us. So whoever you see, you know, is, is God speaking, that person. How about um, discernment? Like, if, is, is it really God speaking? You have to test the spirits. So I'd like to read a, an unusual poem to you at the moment. Um, it's called the, uh, the Robe of Christ, and it's by a gentleman named Joyce Kilmer. And some of you may have been fortunate enough when you were in grade school and high school back then that we had to learn poetry off by heart. And uh, one of Joyce Kilmer's poems was, I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree a tree whose leafs, leafy arms, you know, reaches up to the heavens and prays. Well, he also wrote one called the robe of Christ. And now Jesus, uh, apparently, after they scrung, they beat him almost to death with the cat of nine tails, a whip with pieces of metal and glass on it. And, uh, you know, he, he's in terrible state. They put his garment back on him again. And, um, and lead him out to Calvary to be crucified. And then they stripped him of his garment again, and his garment was given to one of the soldiers on Calvary. So here is a, here is a poem about the robe of Christ. Okay, and it starts off, at the foot of the cross on Calvary, three soldiers sat and diced, and one of them was the devil, and he won the robe of Christ. When the devil comes in his proper form to the chamber where I dwell, I know him and make the sign of the cross, which drives him back to hell. And when he comes like a friendly man and puts his hand in mine, the fervor in his voice is not from love or joy 
or wine. And when he comes like a woman with lovely smiling eyes, black dreams float over his golden head like a swarm of carrion flies. How many a million tortured souls in his red halls there be? Why does he spend his subtle craft in hunting after me? Why does the devil spend his subtle craft in hunting after you? Kings, queens and crested warriors whose memory rings through time. These are his prey and what to him is this poor man of rhyme? That he with such laborious skill should change from role to role should daily act so many a part to get my little soul. Or he can be the forest and he can be the sun or a buttercup or an hour of rest when the weary day is done. I saw him through a thousand veils and has not this sufficed? Now, now must I look on the devil robed in the radiant robe of Christ. He comes and his face is sad and mild. With thorns, his head is crowned. There are great bleeding wounds in his feet and in each hand a wound. How can I tell who am a fool? If this be Christ or no, those bleeding hands outstretched to me those eyes that love me so. I see the robe, I look, I hope, I fear, but there is one who will direct my troubled mind. Christ's mother knows her son. O mother of good counsel, lend intelligence to me, encompass me with wisdom, thou tower of ivory. Then Mary speaks. This is the man of lies, she says, disguised with fearful art. He has the wounded hands and feet, but not the wounded heart. Beside the cross on Calvary, she watched them as they diced. She saw the devil join the game and win the robe of Christ. So there's, uh, there's somebody else speaking through something else. The devil comes to somebody looking like Christ. So uh, do not be deceived. We test the spirits to, to see do they come from God. Saul in the Old Testament consulted a witch and I'd encourage you in this strange times in which we're living um, not to be consulting witches or uh, horoscope people or any of that, for any of that. Uh, I'll try to find this here. Saul, he, he was the uh, first king of the Jews, David being the second, and Solomon being the third, and Jesus being the last king of the Jews. Um, battle was going against him, and he decided to, to consult a witch, the witch of Endar, she's called. So um, then Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is like a witch for me to go and consult her. His servant said, there is a witch lady at Endar. And so Saul, disguising himself and changing his clothes, set out accompanied by two men. Their visit to the woman took place at night Disclose the future to me, he said, by means of a ghost. Conjure up the one I shall name to you. The woman answered, look, you know what Saul has done, how he has swept the seers and the wizards and the witches out of the country. Why are you setting a trap for my life then, then to have me killed? But Saul swore to her by the Lord God, as the Lord God lives, he said, no blame shall attach to you for this business. 
Then the woman said, whom should I conjure up for you? He replied, conjure up Samuel. And Samuel was the judge in of Israel, the land of the Jews. Then the woman saw Samuel and gave a great cry. She said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said, do not be afraid. What do you see? The woman answered Saul, I see a ghost rising up from the earth. What is he like? He asked. She answered, it is an old man coming up. He is wrapped in a cloak. Then Saul knew it was Samuel, and he bowed down to his face to the ground and did homage. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed my rest, conjuring me up? Saul replied, I am in great distress. The Philistines are waging war against me, and God has abandoned me, and no longer answers me either by prophet or by dream. So I have summoned you to tell me what I must do. Samuel said, and why do you consult me when the Lord God has abandoned you and is with your neighbor? God has done to you as he foretold through me. He has snatched the kingship from your hand and given it to your neighbor, David, because you disobeyed the voice of the Lord God and did not execute his fierce vengeance against Amalek. We're back in the time in history where there's more of, uh, you know, people consulting seers and, and witches. Uh, I, I would encourage you, cease and desist. Um, we have the Trinity and we consult the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.